Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us here today. Uh, my name is Dave Hellyer. I'm VP of Business Development for Tadsoft. And uh, I have the, the pleasure today of introducing one of our uh, system integration partners, uh, someone that's, that's got his eye on the technology and um, uh, specializing primarily in pharmaceutical applications, uh, Richard Benamy of Controlware. And so this is part of a series that we're looking at starting here at Tadsoft, where we introduce some of our integration partners, talk about their experience, what their Tadsoft factory studio story is, and maybe give an example of some of the work that they've done. So we're kicking off the series today with Richard, uh, Richard Benamy. So uh, again, my name is Dave Hellyer. Uh, Isabella, if you could, Isabella is helping us out here today, so she'll be uh, driving the slide. So next, Isabella. So we'll start with just a just a moment about Tadsoft because many of you have already seen Tadsoft or at least a, a bit aware of it. Uh, so uh, Tadsoft is a software development company, and the software we develop we refer to as a platform for developing automation projects, uh, primarily in the industrial space, called frameworks. And so what you see here in the middle is frameworks. It's a single development environment. It's one fully integrated system. It's not a bunch of modules that you install and maintain separately. It's one fully integrated system. So no matter what revision you're using, everything always works together all the time, which is a very nice, uh, a nice feature to have. So we license frameworks in really four different ways, as you see here over on the right. Uh, at the bottom, we have a, a license we call our Edge Gateway. And the Edge Gateway is really a, only a couple things. It's a data migration tool, so it's got all the connectivity, all of our over 70 plus uh, protocol drivers that ship with the product uh, included, uh, most of them at no extra charge. And by most of them, I mean all but just a few, okay? Uh, in the power industry primarily um, but over 70 protocol drivers ship with it all the database con uh, connectivity and so it connects to the data sources and it moves that data uh, off to another location so bring that data that's out in the edge into a centralized location it includes store and forward capabilities in it so if that connection goes away we buffer the data up where it, where it lives and then when that connection comes back, we forward it on. It's got scripting capabilities. So if you need to manipulate data or you know have some uh, derived values that need to get calculated before uh, you move the data to the database, it's got all that built into it uh, and no extra charge. So that's the Edge Gateway. Building on top of that, our Edge HMI platform provides all that same kind of functional capability. But if if you can imagine when you go out, out on site or go out to a machine or out to an asset somewhere where you, you may need to be able to change a set point or to acknowledge an alarm, more machine level operator interface type functional capabilities than a true SCADA platform. Um, that's what the Edge HMI is all about. So it does everything Edge Gateway does and then it provides some visualization, some alarming, some reporting uh, so, you know, a, a smaller scale than you would get from the full implementation of the platform, which is comes in the uh, Factory Studio software. So Factory Studio is all the power tools, everything that, that's uh, in the platform to develop your applications are enabled in Factory Studio. And um, uh, when you use Factory Studio with an unlimited amount of I.O. and a limited number of simultaneous development engineers working on the same or many projects simultaneously, as well as in runtime, an unlimited number of runtime clients. We call that Frameworks Unlimited. So we start small at the Edge Gateway, go to Edge HMI, then Factory Studio, and then the full implementation of Frameworks Unlimited. They're all the same exact source code. They're all built on frameworks. So it makes it easy to maintain and uh, evolve the platform as we move forward. So uh, let's go ahead to the next one, Isabella. 
So uh, here we thought we'd just put up a slide of some of the customers that we have um, in many different industries. You see a good representation in, in the pharmaceutical and life sciences here, but you also see oil and gas. Um, there's steel, metals, um, uh, there's water here. Uh, you know, any type of, of industry that's using automation, we probably have an application uh, in that industry uh, for sure. So um, these are many of our customers. Of course, the list goes on and on and on. It, it, Isabella? So I'm going to let uh, the expert tell you about uh, his work. So um, without any further hesitation, uh, I bring you Richard Benamy. Rich? Thanks, Thanks Dave. Um, yeah, I just want to talk about our company and our Tatsoft journey. Um, basically, we've been in the um, IT, IoT conversion space for, I'd say, about the last 10 years, where we've been uh, working with, with both sets of data and trying to integrate them and basically integrate a lot of the IT technologies into OT platforms. Generally, um, in IT, you know, they develop things for DevOps and networking and guys like Google and Facebook, you know, scale them massively and battle test them. And they then they introduce these technologies out into the environment. And a lot of these technologies really apply to the industrial space also. And we've kind of been focusing on that. <laughs> and Tatsoft, in our mind, is a revolutionary platform for accomplishing this. Uh, typically, in the past, we've had to stitch together and build a lot of custom processes and uh, make things that work but are not totally scalable. Um, with Tatsoft, that's all changed. And there's also um, another key development in this area has been using MQTT protocols with PubSub. And we're going to focus heavily on that because in our minds, uh, that's a game changer. So, uh, you know, here's, here's the agenda that generally you want to follow. Uh, you know, question is why another SCADA? I, we've been working with SCADA for, I don't, I don't even want to tell you it's been too long. And, uh, you know, we've seen all the major packages and work with them, but the game has truly changed. It, it's really exciting. And um, now instead of SCADA, like Dave said, it's a platform and it's, it's a data platform. And you have things, you have all the traditional SCADA, but now you have it integrated with the IT .NET capabilities. And you can bring in things like with Docker containers, all database drivers, and you can do a lot of the development that was traditionally, you know, in IT with web development and reporting and integrate that all with your plant data. And we find that this is kind of where the, where the horse is going, where the industry is going, because, you know, you don't want to have separate data. Business is holistic. You know, you have the, your production, you have your sales, you have your quality management and all these other systems that need to interact. But due to existing technologies, they were all kind of siloed and you had to stitch things together by hand like we did before. Um, we are really excited with Tatsoft and uh, frameworks to use that to make things um, much more scalable, much more useful, have governance and, uh, you know, make it a, a true application and not something that we integrate. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the current challenges um, that, you know, you can read along with me that, you know, IT systems um, using industrial data are not scaling, which is basically what I just said. And, you know, cut, you got to use custom scripts, data science and machine learning. You know, you got, you got to tie everything together and stitch everything together in a process we call ETL. And 
there was no good model and good way to do that. And also, sometimes the bandwidth capabilities to make that happen just weren't there. Okay, we talked about the cloud. Okay. Um, okay, and then here's a little bit of a graphical representation of what's happening. Traditionally, we had data flowing all the way up uh, the Purdue pyramid, this was called. And I think anybody who's been in business has seen this for a long time. And what we're moving toward is smart manufacturing where everything is interconnected. And you know, the, so you might have a sensor in the field and it'd be great to show to the operator who's running that line, but also your MES system might need it, your laboratory system needs to know what's going on, quality management, might want to look at the alarms around that. And to connect all that through this old model was sometimes different. You had all, all these different interfaces and you needed integration and custom processes in this area right here. Okay, next slide. Okay. And the key to making this happen is a, is a new architecture. And I want to focus heavily on it because we didn't pick it. Basically, Amazon picked it for you because and they've done all the hardening and the battle testing and think things like that. Also, Facebook uses this broker technology in their messenger. So it, it's like we're not we're not introducing anything new. We're we're doing the classic where it's all been battle tested up in the IT area and some of the most uh, technologically driven companies have implemented successfully and become, you know, the top market cap in the world and said, oh, maybe we can learn something. And this is what we want to show. And OK, so here this broker, they use a broker technology and it's based on MQTT protocol, which is PubSub. And one of the big advantages of PubSub is that you don't have to constantly pull for data. Basically, your device is in the field, publish into a broker, and then all your other applications, the SCADA, MES, the historian, the analytics, all you know, tie into that. Okay, next slide. Okay, another thing that's um, kind of new with these newer technologies and was developed, uh, <laughs> Tesla was one of the first people to really implement this, is the concept of uh, a UNS structure where instead of dealing with tags, we deal with assets. So basically, you know, a line is kind of an asset and it has, you know, you have pumps and valves and all kinds of other equipment, maybe temperature sensors, and you group them all together in a hierarchical structure which makes, you know, discovery and relating pieces of information much easier. Okay, let's let's go down. Next slide. Okay. Um, and by doing this structure, here are some of the some of the benefits we've seen. Is that uh, we accelerate data um, between business teams. So, you know, your qual. I mean, if your quality stuff team needs stuff, uh, it's all in your SCADA. And then you go, you know, oh, you know, we got to run a separate report for quality and, you know, to get them what they want or run it through a spreadsheet. Now we just publish it to a broker. And then what happens is quality then goes reads that broker or maybe our laboratory system reads that same broker because it needs the same information. So you have a common interface. And I can't um, stress to pub sub is a key component of all this is that most data 93 percent of it doesn't update within a minute and if you talk about a second i mean you're talking about i think it's like one hundredth of a percent data doesn't change within one second but in the current um mechanisms we're always polling so we're asking for a lot of data that never ever changes and it puts tremendous overhead on the bandwidth and it's been a barrier to making stuff like this happen. Next space. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, we can. Okay, we have a demo and we're, uh, you know, one of the things I want to show and I'm going to present here. Excuse me. You know, we're going to go into the factory studio environment and talk about you know, how, how this all works. Can you guys see, see my screen? Uh, okay. I see a slide that says brewery demo, uh, brewery line one. Okay, okay, let me share my screen. Okay, and I'm going to. There we go. Okay. We're loading the project. And, you know, this project, I want to demonstrate kind of the concepts of asset management and writing things into a broker. Okay, and we're just going to run the project now. And it's going to be it's going to be a standard batching project pro, project that uh, you see constantly. And basically, I see a lot of SCADA vendors use this to demonstrate their product. OK, and, you know, what we have is a brewery. We have a brewery line and we run a simulation on it. And, you know, this is this is standard SCADA stuff. Okay, and, you, and the graphics are very nice. It's all um, .NET based and things like that. But, um, you know, there's, there's some special features that we've, we go and look at the design of this application that really stand out and make this the new breed of SCADA and is, is different for, than how things were tr traditionally done. Okay, so we see things going out, and I just want to show you two. And these are standard SCADA features, but, you know, we feel that, uh, you know, even, you know, when you see behind the covers, so we look at, like, the grist mill, and we'll work without a net here. You know, here we just pick out the trend on the level, and then we see that, you know, the next thing is goes into a mash tunnel. So we look at the level here, but we see them overlaid and we see, okay, that things are, you know, we just see the levels and here, here everything was trending in the background. And then we have a nice, this, this nice screen where everything laid out and we can pick things out so we can get, you know, this brew line one, and then we see everything in a nice hierarchical structure. And this was kind of, you know, and we'll just look at the ever, look at the things in the other tunnel and this is traditionally SCADA but what the nice thing is in in factory studio you get this right out of the box this whole screen comes in and it, you know you can go in and change the you know this isn't that exciting but you can change you know anything you can do so on this is based on the this is based on one of the project templates that that uh, you can right. select you when you go to create a new yeah. project. Yeah. And you get All this the things right from out of the, the header to the printing. Yeah. 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 And you can say too, you can, uh, you, you can actually do and save, save these groups and save groups of pens and put this right out there. And it's a really full featured. We've done this for a lot of pharmaceutical clients. They just love it. They, um, and what we do too, and a nice thing, that factory studio has over others is the way they handle clients is it's a very simple low cost windows control that shows up in your clients and they see the same screen and you can you know have different protections so they're only uh read only on the remote clients in certain areas you know based on how they log in and they see the same screen for minimal cost and there's you know we find that you know traditional traditional clients don't offer this level of flexibility just in the trending and analysis and this comes right out of the box no code okay i did not i did not put a single line of code into this and then they have the you know then we have the alarm handling where we have special things where we have the active alarms and the alarm history 
And I think Tatsoff does a great job on this, but I mean, this is not something new in SCADA, but Factory Studio has all the has all the bells and whistles of a traditional SCADA from the low point up until the high point and provides a common platform and reduces your learning. And also there's a, uh, a dashboard component too. So this, I mean, this is just showing off. And what this is doing is actually looking at our personal laptop and it's using .NET calls into the performance of your computer and then relaying it all out here. So it's not, we're not looking at a PLC or anything or a simulation. We're actually looking at the process registers on on the computer okay so that, i think that's something a little unique and we go home and then you know you have the standard security system here and all the all the features of SCADA very nicely okay now what i want to sh show you too is that you look at this screen we're showing two lines and in reality this is only one screen that we, you know, Factory Studio is dynamic enough and it's object-based that you can go, you know, you can have one screen and one object on each and then just change the references to each. So if you look at line one, we're kind of done the simulation and, you know, we have the, uh, our brew kettle is full at the end. If we go to line two, it's got all different data. And if we start this, you know, the simulation is going on for line one, line two, and then there's line one. Okay. There's something else that this application is doing. It's publishing. Oops, I'm sorry. I didn't run the broker. If we run this broker starting, I just started the broker. We're actually publishing all the values that you see that you see on the trend here. Like all the levels and if we go over here and look at the blue line there's a, if we look on the mesh tunnel there's a ph value so that's all being published out to a broker now and if we i'm going to do something called so this is just a client looking at our broker and You'll see if we just connect to our broker and just make like this is a, uh, and we just subscribe. So I'm gonna, excuse me. You always, hey, hey, Rich. You, always, you always screw up something in a demo. And one of the things that I uh, messed up was that I didn't have my broker turned on. Okay, so we, we just had a we had a, a quick question here. Is this um, is this using a SQL database for the historian, or is this using the Tatsoft Canary historian here? What are we using? Uh, this this one. Okay, right now we're using the SQL historian on on this one, but the, that's the beauty of of this trend application is it doesn't have to. That Factory Studio has a structure to display all this trend data. So if you just map whatever data source you're getting your data to into that structure that they publish and tell you, it's a very simple structure, then you can get your data from every, anywhere. And also one of the things that uh, we we love is a, our historian um, influx DB <laughs> for the one for the main reason that it's it's used by Comcast and other big companies to run their total data ops, you know, looking at millions of servers and containers and everything like that. But it's also open source and available free of charge for the kind of applications we use in industry. So you, you get this enterprise level historian that scales down to a level that works great in our applications and it's like it's, it's open source and we can show you that that's a whole new area you know we we've, we've gone that way in a lot of customers now 
you know, sometimes they go in and say, oh, we want to collect all this data and we want to store it and we want to, um, you know, give it to our analysts to work with. And then we say, you know, you should put that all in a historian and we get two answers. One is, I know pie is prominent in the pharmaceutical industry. Well, you know, all our validated data is there. If we put a new tag in, we've got to go, you know, go through a whole process and that slows us down. Or, you know, if we want to get a historian from some other vendor, you know, some of the, for openers, we're looking at probably in the $10,000 range. And, you know, sometimes that's tough to get for a proof of concept. Whereas with tax off, you know, you just buy your tax off license and then you can pump it into something like an influx and you have your enterprise level historian right at your fingertips. And the one thing about these historians is they are lightning fast. I mean, we used we used influx in the old days when we were just piecing things together and we had about 150 sensors in there and we were trending them every second for about three years. And you could put up, pull up three years worth of data in, a, I'd say less than a second. Try doing that in SQL, and you'll pull your hair out. Okay, so that's, uh, that's another big issue. Okay, I think that uh, I wanna start talking about a little bit about the development environment. Okay, if we go in, and this is the development environment for that that particular through line. And the, the one thing I want to emphasize here is assets. And if you look at assets, one of the things is if we look here down and we just look at our tags, our internal tags, okay, we have a brew line tag. So we just have one brew line tag and then we have three lines running off the brew line tag. And let's look at line one. And we have a brew kettle, a grip, you know, the whole, you saw all the, all the equipment on the line. And then underneath, we sh showed um, what kind of, a, you know, the pumps and the valves and some of the sensors associated with that line. Now, this one, we use kind of the same line. It's called the tank object. Okay, so we go in and look in this, you create a tank object. And this is standard asset modeling. And this is how you asset model inside Factory Studio. And this is a totally, um, it, it, this is very tough to do in standard skaters. And we think it's a, a huge value add. And so we, all the equipment, you wouldn't do this, but just for the demo sake, we make as a, as a tank. So every one of those pieces of equipment, we consider a tank. And we have, these particular elements in the tank. And if you look at some of the other things is like this type is a valve type. So this is another user defined type within the tank type. So you can have this nested hierarchical structure of user types that really constitute an asset. If we look, so let's look at the valve type. It's kind of simple, but you know, it's the status and you know, this is a tag to turn it on and off. Okay, but in real life, these things would get, get a little more complicated, but you'll see where the value is as we go through. Okay, one of, one of the things is, is that, you know, we create this asset tree with it. So when you do this, and you, and you see this asset tree is the same thing that shows up in our, in our trend screen. So we're able to like go through and organize all the data. So when somebody wants a trend or wants to look at things across trends from, from you know, maybe we want to look at the, uh, you know, the level in line one and compare it to the level in line two. We just know that, you know, we go right down the same thing. We look at the brew kettle and then we open it up and go down to the level and we know we can compare the two. So they're, they're in a nice organized structure and um, you know that organizes our tags. Now we can see too, when we publish these things out into our broker, you can see all, all the stuff is 
right in the broker. And if you can see this tag type, so the MQTT knows about the structure of that particular high level tag, the, the tag, sorry, like the, like the brew kettle tag. So it knows it's a, it's a type tank. And so when we go to log it to our broker, here's what we do. You'll see, it's like, we go to our points. <laughs> and basically I take brew line two and I log it to my bro and I point it to my broker and I put brew line one and I give it, you know, I, I just give it a topic and namespace and it's all published to the broker in that same hierarchy. You know, there's about, I mean, I didn't count them, but I'd say there's about 50 tags in there, maybe 60. And you just get to the high level and then it brings everything in below it. Yeah, I don't know. Are there any questions coming in, Dave? Or Yeah, the, a, cu a couple. Could you go, could you just show uh, the tag uh, uh, templates that, that are making, there you go. Yeah, and then in the templates. Yeah, so, okay, bottom line is, we have a tank template that this refers to like every piece of equipment. So if you look at every, every brew, you know, every piece of equipment, like a brew kettle or a mash tunnel is really considered a tank And it. So when you create a tag at the, that's, that's a tank, all these other tags come with it and, and all down the hierarchy. So you can get, so you do you do design things at the top level and all the the bottom level details come through with it and you don't have to concern yourself with it okay and you can access these things you know very easily in a structure if we look at the you know if we go back to the tags you basically look at you know brew line one and then the brew kettle and then all these other things coming from the template pulling pulling with it let me just show you too so you look at uh actually i screwed up there's actually a, a higher level tag that contains all four of the tanks it's called a brew line we forgot to show you that template so even if the tank template isn't the highest level the brew line is at the highest level and it basically combines all the four tank all the four tanks we were talking about mm. okay I don't know if Rich. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. We we had another question um, as uh, as it relates to the applications that you've worked on. Now, visualizing alarms uh, is that something that um, that you find a, a high demand for in mobile devices? And uh, have have you set that up or uh, shown how? Can we show how to do that in local devices or? Um, on, on a mobile on a mobile device so okay when a mobile yeah. device okay here's um one of the things that's nice in the alarming i'll go into the alarming where and i'll see where you can go in is uh we have something called a notification method so what you do is you factory studio has a whole mess of ways to group alarms you know you can group them by air um and also areas so you have a a ton of uh attributes around your alarm and then what we do is you create a notification method in here we don't have one here but that's that's just the script and basically so you, so you you put a notification and you can have a different notification method with each type of alarm and the number of alarms you put in or none of the alarm types is or actually what they call them groups is unlimited and you can have a different notification for each group and have each group handle it in a different manner and when you when you do that factory studio passes an alarm structure with all the details about the alarm that happened and then you can either send out messages or you know you can do whatever you want whatever is available in the dot net platform Unfortunately, I don't think this application shows it, but we've done that in environmental monitoring systems and total flexibility. And we, you know, generally we send things out both SMS and email. And, you know, we built, 
we actually build screens in Factory Studio that allow you to say, okay, which user gets which message or what type of group and things like that and provides great flexibility. You can build a huge uh, notification system that we find that sometimes uh, a lot of people go to third parties for and, you know, it, it's all there right in Factory Studio. And then you can bring you know, also the, bring in. The, go ahead. Uh, the logical alarm areas, is, as you touched on, is is a very nice feature and usually gets a few oohs and ahs. So rather than having your alarms come in as a list of alarms as they occur, you can segment them off and say, I want to look at my pressure alarms or my pump alarms or my OEE or KPI alarms. You know, you can group those and decide how you want to interact with them, visualize them, acknowledge them, that kind of thing through uh, logical alarm areas. So that, that's a real nice tie-in as well. And so visualizing those on uh, on mobile devices. So when you create your screens, you you know, you can have an alarm window, uh, whether it's something that's running on a, on a .NET PC, a Linux device, or uh, on a mobile device. Uh, yes. So it all ties okay. together and it's one platform to create that no matter what you're ultimately going to be running in. Yeah. So it makes it very uh, yeah, simple. The alarm handling and the, this notification method is key. That it, it, um, you know, unfortunately, I can't, I don't have it to show it right now. We can do that offline. And um, Dave's well versed in that. And, you know, we've written some things just to send out SMS messages and emails. And it's, it's it's kind of trivial and and they pass a whole structure that allows you to do a million things with it say you know you compare it with the data table and say okay is this guy you know in the data table and does he you know get this type of alarm should he get the notification and you say okay great you know so you don't get alarm saturation and you have the full scripting capabilities to to go uh to go do that and you know while you're talking about it, i think this largely leads us into scripts too so we're seeing uh seeing a little bit of a lag on the scripting engine but that's the one thing that um that i think really isn't separates tatsoft and factory studio from a lot of the other packages in there is that all the scripting is in .NET, and you can choose your language, C Sharp. I'm oh, sorry, that was the wrong guy. You look in a simulation package. This is this is written in C Sharp, but also you have a .NET and Python in there, and um, you run. I can, yeah, I want to show you something unique here that I think this is worth the price of admission. Is you attach a debugger, and then if I put a breakpoint here, this thing is running. I think I, I didn't run the simulation, but I'm going to go back to uh, to our. OK, and then I'm going to start the simulation and we should hit our breakpoint there. Oops, did I attach it? Never mind, it's demo time, but. Um, you know, you hit breakpoints here and then you, you get uh, kind of you can you can go in just like in visual studio and see what's happening right at that time okay i feel like i didn't put in the debug information here but yeah debugging with the let me let me just try to put it somewhere in the other okay and also the fact that you know all the scripting is true.net like one of the things here is let's say we get it look at a tag here we do our development let's just do go in there and see this is a compound tag okay so you see here and you see all the sub things on the brew line you see all the kettles that that come in here and you know you can go you can go down them the line, you know, the grist mill. Oh, you know, I want to see the level in the grist mill. 
So all the tags now are organized in a hierarchical structure. And, you know, you have this IntelliSense to go work with that. That's a, that's a huge time saver. And with the new applications, you know, you're spending a lot more time in the scripting area. So Factory Studio scripting is, I believe, second to none. And it's full .NET. So if you used any uh, .NET languages, what I've done too is some complicated scripting. I've actually done in Visual Studio and just debugged it in Visual Studio. And then I just cut and paste it right into Factory Studio and it just runs. And I think Dave, you might want to talk about, I don't know, uh, you know, there's been, there's some stuff going on with, with you know, enhancing the scripting or too early to talk about that? Well, sure, uh, as, as as only a little bit because we don't want to let all the cat, the cat completely out of the bag, but we are a software company and we are developing our platform. And as as new newer ways and newer technologies emerge and or evolve, uh, we always look for ways to leverage those to to the better of our of our platform and thus for uh, integration partners and ultimately we're all for in it for for end users so uh, we will be having uh, we continue to develop the platform uh, we expect to have another major release uh, uh, coming uh, at, uh, at some point and um, we'll be sharing more information about the enhancements uh, as we get closer to it uh, we don't want to get everybody excited before we're able to, to go ahead and ship it but I do want I do want to uh, kind of go back as we're uh, kind of running out of, out of time a little bit here. Um, if there were other use cases that you wanted to go through, there you go. You just brought that up, Rich. Uh, Rich why don't you go ahead and talk about these for a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There was a. Uh, okay. I mean, one of the biggest use cases we see is. Uh, they all, they all kind of revolve around the concept that we can tie in data from various sources and relate it and give it context and make it available through a broker to other systems. And that opens up, you know, a host of, of use cases that weren't never like possible with old SCADA, but, uh, you'd run into like issues like, okay, we, we did all this stuff in the SCADA and we developed all these nice screens. Um, now, when we want to share it to all the other people out there in the factory, we're paying like a full license to each one. And, you know, if we want to share it with a hundred users, um, we're, we're looking at astronomical costs. And so you can't do that. Um, Tats off gets rid of that. You know, they keep their, remote clients on a concurrent basis, uh, very reasonable. I mean, do you want to throw out a number? I think the number's impressive, Dave. You know, how, how the pricing on a remote client, I think that's a key, uh, a key element of the system. We, okay. He's, he's mom. Uh, <laughs> salespeople don't like to talk about prices. No, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We just had, a, we had another question pop up. If, uh, okay. Let me, let me go ahead. And so, uh, okay. Uh, I don't know if I get. So okay. Yeah, okay. So if, yeah, if you look at these things, does, does you, IntelliSense work? <laughs> does IntelliSense work with both Factory Studio and .NET commands? And the answer is yes. Uh, when you are in in the platform itself, um, uh, depending on where you are, if you're configuring an animation, you're working uh, in in a script. Wherever you're working, not only the things that are defined within your project, but the system itself, um, everything uh, is, you, you know, you, you just start typing. If you want to get into the .NET environment and you're in the scripting, you just type system and dot, and now you're starting to get into all the attributes to, uh, within the .NET environment. And so, yes, the answer to the question is it does support those. Go ahead, Rich. Sorry. Yeah. The yeah, I think, you know, we can go into the details of it. I think the the one takeaway I think that I would want is that some of the things we just touched on 
and opens a whole new breed of applications within, you know, we say SCADA, but like you pointed out in the beginning, this is a platform. So it's, you've, you've really changed in the game here. It's no longer traditional SCADA. It's a, um, a true asset modeling, um, UNS namespace builder, um, data integration, you know, it's okay. And to get, you know, to get these use cases, look at, look at just the use cases here. Um, you wouldn't dream about doing that with traditional SCADAs and they're all, um, they're all available with the TATSOFT you know, factory studio platform. I, I could so imagine I moving the data, moving the data around for all of these, uh, using older software would be quite, quite a monumental yeah. task, but okay. using MQTT technology and the tools that we have inside of frameworks makes this a whole lot easier. Okay. And, and I have, you know, if you want to hear some uh, stories from the field, you know, it's always like great to, uh, you know, I, I just want to talk about some of the applications we've done. Um, and, you know, a lot of it focuses on enhancements to legacy systems. So you can, you know, if you don't want to cut your teeth on, you know, some some of these uh, newer applications, um, what you can do to existing applications and enhancing them is, you know, you know, makes people very very happy. And one of them is we use an environmental monitoring system where people were using. <laughs> They were using like Honeywell's uh, chart recorder system, and um, they also had a building management system, and they couldn't relate the two together because sometimes um, with your environmental monitoring, you think you need things from the building management system. We pulled all those things together inside of Factory Studio and married them, and presented them with some of these great charts and. We had remote clients everywhere because uh, the, the pricing and licensing issues um, were perfect for that. And, you know, we, we produced a low cost system, which, which was basically the price of like two or three client licenses on another system. And we had 25 clients on this system. Okay. Another thing that we did was, uh, you know, mobile particle counters. And these are these are kind of like lab instruments that are quite uh, prevalent in the pharmaceutical industry. And there was a, they had done this with a legacy system and then they had to bring in some third party software to do this store and forwarding and a lot of the interaction with this equipment factory studio with all its drivers and all the scripting, we were able to eliminate about $20,000 worth of software cost, you, you know, just by using the platform. And also, you know, it was totally integrated and made for uh, a, a much tighter and cleaner environment. And you didn't get into a finger pointing, you know, this, this module isn't, isn't quite working or they've upgraded it. And now there's a, a, a versioning problem. And uh, the last thing what we're doing is too, is we're actually going into legacy systems that have their data in weird, weird models. And sometimes they want to um, keep this data in weird models because they don't want you to get at it. And they want you to have to come to them to go and make sense of your own data. Where what we do is we actually put Factory Studio right next to these systems because they're validated and they work and we don't want to upset the apple cart, but we unlock the data. What we do is we um, we tie in directly to the PLCs or other controllers that have the source data. We record all the events and alarms and other data inside Factory Studio's environment, and then we can put it in a unified namespace and contextualize it and make it uh, more normalized so, so people can of 
all stripes can work with it. Okay, you want to? Excellent, excellent. Well, so um, folks, uh, as, as we're winding down here, if there's any other questions, uh, now would be a good time to ask them. Uh, you can certainly follow up with us. Um, uh, you know, based on the email that was sent out with the invitation, you can send any questions there and we'll happily uh, respond to those. Um, other, otherwise, uh, I think, I think uh, Rich, certainly thank you for your time and uh, thank you for showing us some of the work that you've done and talking about uh, the technologies you've implemented. And hopefully it, it's been an eye opener for, for the people that have attended that haven't seen this before a refresher for those that uh, that have seen it before. And I uh, 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 want to thank everyone for coming. Hope everyone has, has great holidays. And uh, feel free, you know, we're looking forward to working with you here in the very near future. Stay tuned, as I hinted, things are coming down, uh, down the pike uh, after the first of the year, um, you know, as we continue to develop our platform. And so uh, we'll be letting everyone know as we have our next in the series, uh, in the series of, um, of technology presented by some of our partners, and we'll be letting everyone know, uh, know when that when that happens. So thank everyone for attending here today. Rich, thank you again. Isabella, thanks for helping out, and uh, we look forward to seeing you soon.